Hey everyone, this is Jen and you're watching BPD Woman on this channel. You will learn how to more effectively manage your BPD, CPTSD, and emotional dysregulation. I am not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a mental health professional. However, I got a big leg up on all of those people, which is I've lived with the disorder. I've done several rounds of DBT. I've invested myself in group work, one-on-one -on -one therapy. Um, CBT, EMDR, you get the idea. I'm pretty committed to my recovery. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking below and let's get into today's topic. So what I want to talk to you today uh, about is working for yourself and how that can um, help your, your BPD and it has severely improved um, my symptoms, my behaviors. It's really helped me to regulate my emotion. Um, and it's really helped me to, um, well, keep a job, <laughs> if I'm being honest. A little bit of background about me. Um, I live in a pretty big city, uh, a little bit on the suburbs, but for a very long time, I was a uh, pretty... Uh, in a pretty high stress job, um, working for really large corporations, really important, important people, um, ran around a lot, lots of scheduling, lots of interaction. We're talking about CEOs and, and C-suite level kind of individuals and um, none of it was fun. Uh, it wasn't something that I, you know, nobody like grows up like, I want to be a, I want to be a chief of staff when I grow up. Like nobody says that, right? So, you know, my background is kind of in theater and the arts and comedy and things like that. So um, when I, I just kind of sort of fell into this position, um, gosh, I don't know, like in my early, early twenties. And then, you know, I just kind of just kept going up the ladder and making more money. And then, you know, you get in that gilded golden cage and the golden gilded cage is um, the money, the money, right? So, you know, you keep earning more money and then you kind of, you know, you get all of this experience behind you and then you, you can find it very hard to leave that line of work. And so for, but for a very, very long time, I told myself, I hate this job. I hate, and I mean, I had many jobs, um, and, but all kind of doing the same work. And, you know, um, I probably found myself switching jobs every two years either, or sometimes even less time than that. And either because um, I got fired, um, but most often because I quit or, or I was looking for a better paycheck. And, you know, I tried to convince myself for a really long time that I could find value in what I was doing. But that was just a big lie. You know, probably for 10 years before I went in business for myself, I had been telling myself, you know, I want to do something else. I want to work for myself. I hate working for people. I hate working for these assholes. I hate, you know, smiling and grinning and bearing it. Like I just, I just do. I just hated it. So, and I still do. So, um, uh, here's a little bit of what it was like working for other people. It was very tough, especially in high stress environments. You know, like if you're working in a high stress environment, uh, a lot of demand is on you. You have to be really focused on your work. There's a lot of cognitive thinking. People are relying on you. If you're like me and dealing with big corporations and you're probably dealing with multiple offices and multiple time zones, you're probably getting emails sent to you all the time. It can be very overwhelming, even for a person that doesn't have an emotional dysregulation uh, challenge going on or a disorder. It's, it's very tough. I mean, and I was working, I mean, you know, a light week was probably 50 hours, you know, but really probably it was working 60 to 70. So, um, I would find it very draining if I had an emotional outburst or if I was crying, um, you know, I'd have to take time off. I would want to work from home. Obviously, you know, I've been in business for myself for five years now. So, you know, asking to work from home was a little bit of a different story before COVID. Obviously, it's way more accepted now. But, you know, back then, sure, you could work from home every now and then, but it really wasn't encouraged, um, not to the degree it is now for sure. So it was a lot harder. You know, you had to, I'd had to put on makeup and dress up and present myself. And, you know, 
um, fight traffic and, you know, deal with people and all the nuances and all of that emotional stimulus. It was very hard to contain. And frankly, it was exhausting. And even when I was working with people that I kind of liked or, you know, in a field that I thought was kind of interesting, I really hated kissing ass. And who, who fucking likes kissing ass? Nobody. Um, but even besides that, it just wasn't in a field that I cared about. But, um, and so, you know, I'd find myself like, you know, somebody would say something, I would emotionally react to it, that would get me into trouble. Um, I would find myself in a lot of HR meetings. Um, I would be crying. Um, You know, um, I would want to be doing a really good job and I would just wear myself out. And so, you know, over time, and then, you know, I would change jobs. And then, you know, of course, I didn't have continuity in my retirement and I didn't have continuity in growing with a company. And, and you know, I, I would get a lot of questions as I went to a player from a player. Well, you've only been with this company two years or one year or whatever. You know, I'd have to explain why I got fired. And so, you know, I'd get into arguments with people. Um, and so it just, it was very hard to manage, especially when you're in a cube farm, right? Like, You're not hiding behind a door. And even if you do have a door, people are walking in it all the time anyway. So eventually what happened is around 2017, I got fired. And that was like great, excellent news. It was like 2017 or 2018, whatever it was. And um, I was like, great. And I just made this decision. Like, I am not going to wear another suit ever again. Um, Hello, baby. (laughs) Here's Here's my girl. Here's my girl. Hello. I said, I'm not going to wear another suit ever again. Um, And so I decided to just completely change what I was doing. And at that point I was working, um, I was volunteering with like a dog rescue anyway. So I worked with this dog rescue that I got my own dog. And anyway, I began parlaying that into a pet sitting business. And for a while I worked like with third party apps. But then eventually I grew my, I, I was like, well, why am I, I'm like, I'm really the business maker here, right? Like I may be on these apps, but people aren't hiring me because they like the app. They're hiring me because they like me. And then I'm like, well, if if that's the case, then I will just go into business for myself. Why am I sharing a percentage of my earnings with these people, right? So I built my own website and I, um, you know, did a Google business page. And anyway, now I'm really busy and I'm super happy. And, you know... Um, what are the benefits of that? What are the benefits of working for myself? Well, they are way, way more than the cons. So first of all, I really enjoy what I'm doing. I, I pet sit, I groom, I train animals. I meet different animals all the time. Um, I have long-term clients, but you know, also I have a lot of short-term clients. So, you know, people pop up on the radar and maybe they only use me a couple of times a year because they're on vacation or it's Christmas. Um, I don't interact with the same people every single day. That's good because that helps my emotional regulation or my interpersonal effectiveness or a cognitive distortion. Um, I'm working for myself. So does that mean I can say whatever I want, tell people to fuck themselves? Um, No, because I still have a reputation to maintain and I don't want somebody to leave me a bad review on Google, right? So that affects my business. Um, However... I make my own policies. I decide who I want to work for and with, rather, who becomes a client. Um, I set my own prices. I set my own hours. I determine what I'm going to work and what I'm not going to work. And let me tell you, I work a lot. I work a lot. I work hard. But I don't feel it like I used to feel it working for somebody else, getting in the car, fighting traffic, sitting in a cube, doing shit I hated. I walk all day. I get super great exercise, which is also really great for your BPD and your emotional regulation. Lots of exercise. I'm active. Um, I'm around animals all day. It's a, it's a very low stress job. I mean, of course it's stressful, right? I'm dealing, no matter what business you're in, you're dealing with people, but I'm dealing with, um, animals for the most part. And of course I talk to clients and I have to interface and I have to keep up a rapport and I do all of that. Um, but also all of that background that I came out of in the corporate world, I've used, I mean, basically I ran other people's calendars and business and I marketed them. And now I do that for myself. Um, other benefits, you know, um, 
if I'm gonna have a sad day uh, or if I'm struggling, I'm outside walking dogs. So people can't really gauge that from my face as opposed to if I'm upset sitting in a cube, right? Um, what else? Uh, it's, it's lower stress. Um, I get better exercise. I decide who I want to work for, right? So all of these things kind of decrease the kind of stresses that otherwise I couldn't choose to not encounter in the corporate world. Um, I have, you know, I've come up with my own rules. Um, but my rules are pay me on time, be a nice person and say thank you. That's basically it. And so if I don't want to deal with a, a mean person or I get a bad feeling, I don't go there. I'm like, bye. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm way busy enough that I don't even have to deal with that noise. So I don't. So, um, are there cons? Absolutely. I work a lot, like, but it's, it's not, it, it's not cons to my BPD, right? I mean, of course, sometimes people, they don't want to work with me anymore. Although that's, that's really kind of, uh, that's a lot lower incident. Like, sure, people might not want to work with me, but you know what? That doesn't have, that doesn't mean it has to have something to do with my BPD. That just might mean like we're not a good personal fit or, um, you know, they're kind of nuts or, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I keep telling myself that I'm doing a good job and how I'm able to tell myself that I'm doing a good job is that I make sure that I'm living up to my own personal standards and ethics of doing a good job. That way at the end of the day, I can be like, well, everyone's happy. I've done the best I can. If somebody is unhappy, that's kind of on them. So, you know, um, if you are thinking about working for yourself, I really can't think of many cons to tell you about. I, um, I will say, obviously, I mean, cons insofar as how it affects your BPD. If anything, it's helped mine immensely, right? If I need a quiet moment, I can take that. If I need to step away from the phone for a while, I can do that. Um, if I'm dysregulated, well, chances are I'm probably out walking a dog so I can burn some of that anxious energy off. Now, obviously, you may not want to get into pet sitting, but um, and, and that's not something I ever really considered. I just kind of fell into it. And I, and I have a plan for other things that I'd like to do. I think what's important here, if, if you are thinking about working for yourself, is one, what are your interests, right? So my other interests are photography, um, writing, right? These are other kind of interests that I could later develop into another business to make money. Um, what is your work ethic? Are you a hard worker? Uh, are you motivated? Because if you're not, then that's something to consider because maybe you don't, you're not ready for a success here. You don't want to set yourself up to fail. You want to set yourself up to succeed. Um, but the overhead of like developing a website, creating a Google business page, buying business cards, pretty easy guys. I mean, I had never done any of that before. I had never built my own website. I had never designed my own business card and man, they make it so easy. I mean, uh, uh, it's just, it's so easy. Uh, a caveman could do it. I did it. And I don't have an IT background at all. So um, that, the logistical part was pretty easy. But, but you know, don't forget, BP, borderlines are very outgoing. They're charming. They're magnetic. Um, we care. We care a lot. I mean, that's why my clients are so repetitive. You know, I've chosen a profession where the care and the empathy, especially when it comes to animals, that really works well with my personality. So think of things, you know, what are matches for you? You know, are, um, are you, would you like to go into business for yourself? What are you good at? What, do, what interests you? Do you wanna work with people or do you not wanna work with people? Do you find working with too many people very stressful? I do. Um, and by the way, that's not a borderline thing. That's just, I mean, I know a lot of people that would rather just sit at home <laughs> by themselves. Anyway, so, I hope this has been enlightening, helpful, um, sharing my experience. I would love to answer your questions if you have any about uh, starting your own business. And those could either be related to the logistical business side of things or if you would like to ask me personal questions about how it relates to your borderline. Anyways, this has been BPD Woman and we've been talking about the pros of working for yourself and how it uh, improves BPD. Until I see you next time and everything you do, please be effective. Bye.